Um, okay, welcome. Please introduce yourself and how you know me. I'm Tom Poisson. I'm Carla's husband. I'm Donna Stanks, and I work with her and with friends. I'm Brad Campbell, and I'm Carla's brother. Thank you.
children who have been separated from their mothers during these critical bonding phases are more likely to have emotional and behavioral disturbances and are more likely to drop out of school to, and to be um, incarcerated themselves. Assistant Professor Dr. Angela Tomlin of the Indiana University School of Social Protection of Medicine said that babies need to be supported in order to have strong, healthy relationships with their parents. And when infants feel safe, their cognitive skills, mental health, and school relationships grow. I'm sorry, school readiness grows. Infants who remain with their mothers in prison programs have not shown any adverse effects due to being incarcerated. And the children who develop strong relationships with their mothers are often more successful in their peer relationships and they learn to cope with stress much better. It's critical for these children to have positive social interactions in the early years in order to develop, to aid in, per, in personal growth. And when infants are removed from their mothers during the stages of bonding, then return later to them in life, it creates problems with attachment. When separated from their mothers, infants have been observed to, accept, to experience intense distress and their anxiety is not relieved by being cared for by somebody else. These babies will have higher self-esteem as toddlers when they're able to bond with their mother during critical stages. Marie Celeste Condon, who is a mental health and development specialist from the University of Washington School of Social Medicine, Social Work, found um, that during the early months of the child's life, that's when they learn about trusting in the world. And another study conducted by the American Psychological Society showed that babies become more self-reliant when they bond securely with their mothers. By allowing these mothers to bond with their children, it allows the women to address issues which brought them into the criminal justice system to begin with. The women who participate in the prison nursery program said that these programs assist them with bonding, developing parenting skills, offering infant services and supplies. It gives them opportunities for education, for um, better confinement conditions, drug education, and treatment programs, as well as help from other inmates. And it gives them self-respect. Prison nursery programs help to break the cycle of incarceration from one generation to another. These programs nurture family bonds by offering the babies a safe and stable environment which can put them on a better course in life. Many women form and maintain family bonds, thus it gives them the incentive to turn their lives around and stay out of prison. Now the number of women have in incarcerated has increased by 832 percent since 1950. And some states allow for the babies to stay with their mothers for only 30 days, while others allow them to stay for up to three years. Prison nurseries are designed for short-term non-violent offenders. And there are two million children in America today who have one, at least one parent in prison. Many of these children are under the age of 10. The statistics have shown that 6% of local prisoners, 4% of state prisoners, and 3% of federal prisoners are pregnant at the time of incarceration. These programs have shown positive results, and a survey conducted has shown that most of the women who participated in these programs felt that they had stronger bonds with their children. And all the women have said that every state should offer programs like this to their pregnant inmates. Women who are allowed to keep their babies with them while in prison also have significantly lower recidivism rates than those who are forced to give their children up. And for example, as you'll see in the graph, Nebraska, 
women who participated in the program only had 16.8% of reoffending, whereas those who were not in the program, 50% reoffended. Now, most Western European, Asian, and South American countries allow women to keep their babies with them while they're in prison. And many, bless you, and many countries agree that the best place for an infant is with their parents, with their mother. And for example, Sweden allows for the children to remain with their mother for a year. Mexico requires the children to stay with up until the age of six. In Canada, children can decide to stay in the program with their mother or they can decide when they want to leave. Kyrgyzstan judges have to de decide what the effect of the mother's imprisonment is going to have on the child before he's sentenced to the son. And Germany allows the women to go home in the morning, get their children up, ready for school, do their motherly duty, take care of them when they get home from school, help them with homework, bedtime, and then return to the prison at night to sleep. Now, incarceration is still the preferred method of punishment in America. However, they are beginning to see a shift towards the rehabilitation programs for nonviolent offenders. And many states are beginning to feel the sense of social responsibility to keep these families together. So because of the growing number of women being incarcerated, the Department of Corrections is beginning to take a serious look at prison nursery programs. And in spite of the strict eligibility requirements of these programs, there is a waiting list of women waiting, wanting to participate. So New York is the oldest and longest running program. It was established in 1902 and it allows mothers to keep their babies with them for up to 18 months. A study conducted showed that 71% of the children gain secure attachments with their mothers, which is higher than low-risk community um, children whose mothers had no criminal record and who had no criminal involvement and never spent a day in prison. Nebraska, based on the New York model, and opened their program in 1994. This program accommodates 15 women and also allows for their babies to remain with them for up to 18 months. Washington State can accommodate 21 women and began their nursery program in 1999. They allow for their children to remain with their mothers up to the age of three. 150 women have gone through, prison, through Washington's prison and nursery program. And out of those, only 26 have reoffended. Massachusetts allows for 17 women and babies to be kept at a time, and it also allows their women to keep the babies with them for 18 months. 30 women have currently gone through that program, and only three have reoffended. Ohio opened its program in, 19, in uh, sorry, 2001. And it looks more like a home than a prison with Sesame Street characters painted on the walls, such as Big Bird and Cookie Monster. And 150 women who participated in that program between the years of 2001 and 2008, only 16 have reoffended. That's only 11%. Now, California is the largest. It has it originally had three prison nursery programs, which could accommodate 24 women and children. And these facilities resemble more of a half toy house, but due to the tougher sentencing laws for nonviolent offenses, um, they created another program in 1980, which allowed five, which allowed 20 more women to participate. Uh, women who had 12 to 18 months left on their sentences were not high risk and were able to stay in a private room with their babies until their sentence, before they were released for sentence as well. Illinois houses 15 women and their children up to the age of two for a maximum of 24 months. In 
2007, it opened another program which would allow five more women to remain with their children, and again, up to 24 months. In order for an inmate to participate in Indiana's pro or I'm sorry, in Illinois' program, she has to have the consent of a standby guardian. She has to be within two years of mandatory release. She has to partake in work release programs set forth by the Department of Corrections. She has to remain drug free and cannot be convicted of any violent offense. Now, Indiana's program opened in 2008, and it houses 10 women and their children up to the age, up to 18 months. And an interesting thing about uh, Indiana's program is it offers longer visiting hours, and it also offers summer camp programs for these women to have their other children, their older children, and their spouses to come, and so they can maintain the family bond. West Virginia is the newest state to adopt the prison nursery program. And this program allows for six women to keep their babies for up to 18 months as well, where they live in modular housing on, within the prison compound. In 1998, South Dakota um, allowed women to keep their babies with them for a maximum of 30 days, but the women had to pay a $288 fee. Now, if these women couldn't afford the fee, local churches would offer to help pay this so that the babies could remain with their mothers. Although Iowa does not have a prison nursery program, they do have something for women who are on probation or work release or serving short sentences where the children can remain with their mothers for up to the age of five years old. But these women have to have a job. They have to find their own daycare. Um, but support and advice is offered to them by the staff. Now, it costs more than $24,000 a year to run a prison nursery program. And one of the reasons prison nursery programs are gaining support is due to their low cost. And for example, it only costs, if only five women a year remained out of prison due to not reoffending, it would save taxpayers between $100,000 and $150,000. Now, Washington State has not increased their cost of its prison program since it opened because a lot of the money that they get for it is from social service money for each child. It also utilizes partnerships with community organizations for health care, such as nursing students and some local doctors and pediatricians will contract their, their time. As well as other costs of running the nursery program are funded through charities who give donations such as campers and um, formula. Nebraska's nursery program costs annually about $102,000 and for 15 women, which relates to about $6,800 per woman, per woman per year. Now, although it sounds like a lot of money, the average cost of keeping one woman incarcerated in general population is $31,500. So this is a savings of $24,000. New York and Ohio spent about $90,000 in the year 2002 for their program. And in 2006, Ohio reported that they only spent $4.65 a day um, on their nursery program. Now, placing children of prison inmates into foster care puts a drain on an already um, puts a drain on the state and federal resources. And in fact, statistics show that in 2007. Monthly foster care costs range from $226 in Nebraska to as high as $869 in Washington, D.C. So some critics believe that prison is not a healthy environment for children and that it can actually have harmful effects on children later on in life, although this has not been proven. One of the arguments for prison nursery programs is that the simple fact that it helps reduce the recidivism rate now, those who are opposed to the idea often cite prohibitive costs, but um, as the low recidivism rate shows, the rate, um, the cost of taking these children away from their mothers may actually be even higher in the long run than just leaving them with their mother. 
Other critics believe that prisons are too accommodating or rich. They're supposed to be for punishment. Many critics argue that since inmates are going to reoffend anyway, it will just make the eventual separation between mother and child that much more traumatic for the baby. And again, recidivism rates show that this is not correct. Participation in the prison programs is completely voluntary. These women can drop out any time they want. They can also be kicked out for infractions such as not passing a drug test or for failing to complete their GED program or other things like that. The programs help to develop and coordinate community resources. They help create mentoring programs. They reduce recidivism, and through education, they also reduce child neglect and abuse. If attachment does not develop during the critical bonding stage, it can cause irreversible damage, uh, developmental consequences within the child, such as increased aggression and reduced intelligence. When women participate in these nursery programs, they're better behaved than those in general population, and more than likely this is due to them wanting to remain in the program and keep their babies with them. There are programs about There are programs available to help um, mothers to obtain work, housing, uh, health care, to rebuild their families. They also also offer prenatal and Lamaze classes in order to help ensure the birth of healthy babies. Now, nursery programs support groups also help mothers to uh, learn from each other. It helps them to learn about parenting and infant growth and development. They encourage women to develop reflective capacity to focus on parenting and personal growth and what's best for their child. Parenting classes help women overcome the effects of poverty, past trauma, and substance abuse. And many of these women are required to obtain their GED if they don't already have a high school diploma. And a lot of these programs also also offer job training in areas such as data entry, housekeeping, commercial sewing, food service, and daycare. So it helps them to be able to find a job when they're released. Now the criteria used to analyze evidence relating to American prison nursery programs are their effectiveness, efficiency, and equity. And effectiveness determines the magnitude of evidence that supports positive outcomes relating to a policy. These programs are effective because they reduce recidivism rates substantially. Public and private partnerships were used in order to reduce the cost of these programs. And women who went through the nursery programs developed stronger attachments with their children than those who live in low-risk communities and never spend any time in jail. Evidence that secure attachments actually do take place in American prison nursery programs provides strong arguments for their effectiveness. Efficiency provides for a guide of, um, for assessing the cost of policy and how it relates to the benefits and resources available. Maternal incarceration is associated with increased time in child welfare programs and decreased likelihood of reunification with parents, thereby increasing a cost to an already overburdened state welfare system. Research has shown that children who are raised with their mother in the prison nursery program exhibit secure attachments that are consistent with or exceed population norms, which is in contrast to those who are raised without their mothers. The efficiency of prison nursery programs shows that parental incarceration is associated with mental health disorders, adolescent delinquency, and adult criminality. Equity examines whether a policy can provide access to services. Now, access to prison nursery programs are limited, mainly due to the fact that there are very few states that offer them, and due to the fact that strict eligibility requirements placed on women to participate. 
since the oldest statute regulating the prison nursery program is New York Correction Statute 611, this is used as the template for the other eight states that offer prison nursery programs. Therefore, all prison programs are essentially the same. There are very few differences between them. Now, the three states with the largest prisoner population are Texas, Florida, and Georgia. And not one of these states offers a prison nursery program. So clearly, jail is not the ideal place to raise a child. However, it is also clear that separating mothers from their newborns isn't just cruel. It's detrimental to both the mother and the child. Many people believe that since the kids are bounced from foster home to foster home, and distant relatives, and that they never get to see their mothers anyway, they believe that the benefits of allowing babies to remain with their mothers far outweigh the possible negatives of being raised behind bars. Women who don't bond with their children find it much easier to ditch these kids and return to the life that brought them to prison to begin with. So, disrupting the attachment relationship can have severe consequences since attachment acts as a prototype for all future social relationships. Women who participate in the required program are less likely to reoffend because the issues that brought them there, again, drug addiction, poverty, low education, are, are addressed and treated within these programs. So prison nurseries provide an opportunity for critical bonding to take place between mothers and their children. These programs also facilitate positive changes in the mothers, aid in the development of realistic expectations, and helps to break the cycle of generational abuse and incarceration. The programs are effective for women and children who participate in the program, and they appear to be reasonably efficient. And even though the outcome cannot be known for years, early signs indicate that trying to reunite a family after years of separation is not as worthwhile as trying to keep them together to begin with. And prison nursery programs are creative, gender responsive strategies with the potential to positively affect both incarcerated women and their infant children. The evidence linking prison nurseries' participation to large reductions in recidivism rates makes them a politically viable solution. Again, as, although prison is no place to raise children, it does strengthen the bond between mother and child, it does have been shown to reduce recidivism rates, and it does offer educational training for these women. Therefore, once again, babies should be allowed to remain with their mother while they're incarcerated for a maximum of 30 months. Do we have any questions? Good job, guys. Yeah, good job. Well done.